Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin. Any other time, any other day, you know I'd be singing right now when we get a new player, when we have got a here we go for a brand new player, especially a player that I feel um, could potentially do well at Chelsea Football Club. He's a player that I like a lot. In fact, I love his skill set. I love uh, everything about him, to be honest. Of course, his numbers have got to do better. Any other time, ladies and gentlemen, you know I'd be singing right now. You know I'd be singing, but honestly, I just I just don't feel the same way about purchasing and buying players anymore. I mean, I, I'm damaged goods. I'm damaged goods at the moment. I, I need Chelsea Football Club to start winning games. I'm patient. I am patient. I am all in the belief of this trust in the process notion right now i'm all in i'm i'm, I'm not going to be mariska ever i'm definitely not going to be promoting any level of toxic you know negativity and all that kind of stuff i won't be doing that because i understand it's going to take a bit of time however it is difficult because at the end of the day i'm a fan and wins wins are what is going to uplift our morale you know we're at a situation where losing to manchester city is just it's it's academic. It's 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 a given. It's okay. We ex we've, we 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 accept it. And and long are those days gone where playing a team like Manchester City, we'd be looking forward to these sort of fixtures where you know we want to compete. I understand we're not the same Chelsea anymore. I get it. Um, it's a totally different Chelsea now. It's a totally different remit. And it's going to take a bit of time to come back. And this is why. Look, I can't just come here and sing about. The new latest signing it hasn't been announced yet but it's a here we go ladies and gentlemen you can sing ladies and gentlemen in the in the comment section if you want to sing a particular song comment that song away i've got no issues but i just i don't feel comfortable singing anymore man um i, I need to see our team win games and get back to some level of um dignity do you know what i mean but ladies and gentlemen jao felix to chelsea is a here we go we got this few hours back earlier today it was imminent it was coming um at the end of the day gallagher had to go to atletico madrid for pure profit for chelsea football club and similarly i think there might have been some sort of a deal internally within chelsea and atletico that jao felix or you know a, any particular not any particular player but a player of Atletico Madrid's choice needed to be sold to Chelsea Football Club. It looked like it was going to be Samuel Omar Dion, but right at the end, it broke down. And then straight after Jao Felix, uh, you know, saga started and um, it moved fairly quickly, I'd say. Within a week, Jao Felix to Chelsea is, is a done deal. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts about Jao Felix to Chelsea. Here we go. Um, I think it's a, definitely a player that can help us. But, I mean... We'll get to what some of the pundits are saying, especially Jamie Carragher, what he's talking about with all of these players coming in. How are we going to fit them? It is a headache for Enzo Maresca, and it is a serious question. We may sit here and go, oh, no, it's easily, it can be easily fit. We saw against Manchester City, I get it, it's Manchester City, I understand that, but we saw clearly there are certain personnel who are not fitting the roles that they're playing. You know, Enzo Fernandez, there's a big question mark in midfield. You know, he's playing as a number 10, sort of that left-hand you know, left hand side midfield. Does he fit that role? Could it be Xiao Felix that plays that? And Kunku playing out wide, does he fit that role? Cole Palmer playing more out to the right side. Should he be more, you know, coming into the central areas? So how do you fit everyone in? How do you fit everyone in? And you've got Pedro Neto. There's Raheem Sterling drama as well that we're going to go through. Some of these players need to leave. You have to have one eye on next season too uh, with the likes of Kendry Paez and Estevar William coming through. So it, it is it is a huge question mark as to how you're going to fit all of them in. Uh, some of them won't play every match. Yes, there could be depth and we need quality depth. No problems about that. But some of these players... They may not enjoy being just the depth. You know, you see Raheem Sterling. Uh, he's already wanting to have showdown conversations and this, that, the other. Some of these players keep them bench long enough. Uh, they, they, they will not appreciate uh, not getting enough game time. And that also creates an added pressure for 
Enzo Maresca, but Enzo Maresca, welcome to Chelsea Football Club. This is what used to be for Chelsea once upon a time with great managers in our club and having great squads that they needed to manage. Um, and then they were able to do that. And Enzo Maresca has got to be able to do that. Chelsea have reached an agreement to sign Jao Felix on a six-year deal with an option of a further 12 months coming from David Einstein. We don't have the price as yet, but... We know Fabrizio Romano stated the price could be, I think he stated that yesterday, 34 to 38 million plus add-ons. But yeah, six-year deal with another year on top, seven-year contract. Beautiful. Ja Felix, look, he's got to work out for us. Ja Felix needs to understand that his numbers have got to be a lot better. His numbers for the past few seasons just simply doesn't marry up with the level of player he is. Um, or, or the level of player that he can be with his uh, talent, potential, skill set. So now long-term contract at Chelsea Football Club, he has to produce numbers for us. It, it, there is no two ways about it. Breaking Jao Felix will be in London tomorrow for a medical. There you go, coming from Fabrice Hawkins. Jamie Carragher, you're asking me where Jao Felix is going to play. Do you know what I want to ask you? Where is he getting changed at the training ground? I'm serious. And you know what? People might look at this and go after Jamie Carragher and say, oh, look at this guy sprouting negativity towards Chelsea. It's a genuine question, though. What do you do with Mudrik? What do you do with Sterling? What do you do with Medueke? We've brought in Pedro Neto. We've got Sterling. We've got Cole Palmer, Nkunku, now João Felix, Nicholas Jackson, potentially looking to get Ossie. It is, we need to get rid of a lot of players, whether we like it or not. We need to get rid of a lot of players because it's not healthy to have 40-plus players. We need to trim it down to about 26, 27, 28 max. That's considering if there's any injuries. We have to do this or else it can become a toxic environment where a lot of players, week in, week out, the manager's having to say, you're not even part of the squad. Forget about being bench. You can stay at home. We saw what happened under Graham Potter uh, season when the owners first took over. It was not ideal. So over the next couple of weeks, we're running out of time. We must get rid of players. And the issue is, ladies and gentlemen, some of these players, they don't want to leave because they're on long-term contracts and they're on good wages. Ben Chilwell, prime example. Ben Chilwell, he understands he is no, he's not part of the squad anymore. He's not part of the plans, but he's on big money. He's not looking to leave anytime soon. It's your problem, Chelsea Football Club. It's your problem. I'm going to keep cashing in the check. Similarly, Sterling could feel that way. These players will only leave on their own terms because they've got a long-term contract at Chelsea. So, look, it, it is true. <laughs> where are some of these players? Forget about where they're going to play. Are they actually going to have room in the, in the training ground to even change do you know what I mean? So th these are legitimate questions, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie Carrier, Chelsea need to stop buying players and players need to stop joining them. Look, I've been saying in recent times that it, it's like a stock market at Chelsea Football Club. It's, it's like all of these players are like commodities. Buy, sell, buy, sell. We need to, like after Ossiman, hopefully we do get it because we need a striker. The crazy part is after spending all that money, billions, we still need a striker. We still need this. We still need that. We still need a goalkeeper. We still need a, a boss defender. But after Ossiman, I say we shut up. Uh, hopefully, we do get Ossiman. Lukaku is going that way. But after that, we need to shut up shop. And then in the next windows, January, maybe just stay quiet. But next summer, just focus on a goalkeeper and, and a, a proper defender, a rock-solid defender. And that's it. And then stay quiet for a while it's very difficult for, for fans to connect with players these days because players are just coming in and going. Like They're not really staying at Chelsea Football Club a long time, enough for us to build any type of feeling towards them. They're being used as commodities at a stock market. And I understand this is the model. We want to buy players in terms of seeing if there's an opportunity to get them for cheap and then sell them for profit. I get that. It's a new revenue stream. But it's very difficult as fans to connect with a club that way who are utilizing players in that manner. Um, and, and for players as well, they'll become disillusioned uh, about the football club. They won't be able to connect either. 
And if you're not able to connect with the football club, it's very difficult to then play for the football club. And in order to win games, you have to have a core set of players that's going to stick together for a while. It's going to build this club back up again. And then you have the other players that keep, you know, fight for the squad, um, for, for a place in the squad. And then only you can foster a winning mentality. Right now, it's it's very topsy-turvy. And right now, it's got to a point where it's, it's okay to lose as well. It's okay. You know, we've got apparently club officials telling John Abimi Kill that this is a five to ten year project. Five to ten year project. It's tough to be patient for another five years on top of the two years we've already wasted. We have wasted the last two years. So th th these are true. These are true comments. These are these comments actually hold value. What Jamie Carragher is saying. Jamie Carragher further goes on to say, I don't know why any player would look at Chelsea and sign for them. The only reason could be is their agent is saying we're getting a seven-year deal on big money that's guaranteed money for seven years. That's true, though. You'd think why is someone like Cole Palmer, who had already had a long contract, adding another two more years to his contract? Yes, he's got a bumper rise to his salary, but he's probably looking at it that this is confirmed money. Do you know what I mean? At least the contract is there for the next nine years or whatever the case is, eight years. And it, that's just Cole Palmer. There's so many other players who have that. And yeah, if it doesn't work out, like the way, you know, Mudrik's not working out, Madueke is still 50-50, and there'll be more players that just won't work out. Cassidy is another one that needs to go. David Dutra Fofana is another one that needs to go. Armando Broy has got a long-term contract that needs to go. Chalaba has a long-term contract that needs to go. There'll be players that won't work out, and it'll become an issue. If it doesn't work out, then you can't get rid of them because they feel comfortable having a long-term contract. Ben Chilwell, another one. So, yeah, I understand what the club's doing. Long-term contract, keeping their value, but it can be detrimental as well. It can be very, very detrimental indeed. Gary Neville, I want to know what Chelsea owners know that everyone else doesn't. The long-term contract thing, I don't get it. If they're successful, then you'll have to keep upgrading the contract. And if they fail, it's hard to get them out. That's exactly what I, what I just said. If Cole Palmer, for instance, has another special season like last season, he's going to want more money for next season, and rightly so. Then you're going to have to do another brand new contract for him. So... Yeah, these long-term contracts, I don't know, man. I, I, if anything, I think they, 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 they can be detrimental because you're stuck with the player if it really doesn't work out. And there could be a lot of players where it may not work out. Chelsea have authorized Conor Gallagher to travel back to Spain in the next 24 to 48 hours. Deal uh, was done already for 42 million euros. Here we go, confirmed. This is coming from Bitsi Romano. Big ups to Conor Gallagher. He's been patient. He's not really created any controversy all throughout this period. I uh, wish him all the best at Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid currently actually are playing, and uh, I, think they're, uh, I think they're losing at the moment. Um, let me just have a quick look. No, they've uh, they've leveled things up. It's 2-2, two -two, uh, and it's half time. Wow. Look, um, I can't wait to see F, you know, Conor Gallagher at Atletico Madrid. And um, I think this is a fantastic move for him. Aspilicueta is there as well, so he'll have a familiar face. I just realized because I saw Aspi starting over there. And of course, I can't wait to see him in the Champions League. Now, Sterling. Raheem Sterling drama, ladies and gentlemen. Sterling has demanded answer over his future at Chelsea. This is coming from Sam Dean. Um Rio Ferdinand also very, very vocal about the whole situation. He's baffled as to why Chelsea's treating Raheem Sterling this way. Check this out on, on, on Instagram. Uh, Rio Ferdinand obviously posted this. And look who's liked it. Romelu Lukaku, another bad boy of the football club, liking this whole situation. Uh, Rio Ferdinand saying Chelsea treatment of Raheem Sterling is wild. And Romelu Lukaku first there to like that. I mean... <laughs> I'm so glad Romelu Lukaku is moving on. But look, coming to the Raheem Sterling situation, let's just have one more news about it before I give you guys my um, thoughts on it. Sources say there has been movement today on scheduling talks over S Sterling's future. Enzo Mariska indicated in training last week that his chance of playing would be limited and he should start considering alternatives. Look, if Enzo Maresca has already mentioned that, and Raheem Sterling should be aware as well what is happening. Look at all the players that are coming to Chelsea Football Club. Pedro Neto, João Felix now, potentially another striker. Sterling, sometimes maybe use your common sense as well to the fact that 
you are becoming surplus to requirements. Then there's Mudrik, then there's Medueke. And if you've already been told a week ago that maybe start looking for another club, then there doesn't need to be any public statement. There doesn't need to be any showdown conversations. You need to pick up the phone, call your agent and, and move on. I know this is a sad situation. I get it. What, you know, you've not done, to be honest, anything controversial or anything outrageous to get out of the football club. The issue is you're on large wages, you're on 300 plus K and you're not really delivering in that manner. That's the issue. So if anything, you probably should blame yourself for him, Sterling, if I'm being honest. I've backed you. I like you. But you've let down Chelsea Football Club several times last season when it was your opportunity to really shine and become that player that we all thought you should be, experienced leader in attack. If if Raheem Sterling put the kind of numbers we, we hoped for last season, then he wouldn't be in this situation. The fact that he's been so underwhelming, not just last season, the season before that, the first season, Graham Potter season, Thomas Tuchel, the earlier parts. Raheem Sterling can only blame himself for not taking this opportunity with his both hands to the point where, you know, he's, he's surplus. He's surplus to requirements. So, look, pick up the phone, find a club. But I understand you're on big wages. Not every club's going to pay that kind of wages for you. And there is no obligation for you to leave. You're on big money, so I get it from a family point of view. You want to earn that money. You want to stay in London closer to your mom. Uh, I believe that's why you came to Chelsea. But if you can find a club to move on, please move on. Please move on. But Once again, this is a Chelsea problem. It's not really a Raheem Sterling problem because he's enjoying the 300K. Next up, Gary Neville has argued that Enzo Maresca must educate Chelsea fans after noticing the crowd uneasy response to his style of play. He believes supporters need to get on board with Maresca, train and pull in the same direction. This is, this is a huge thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there is a footage that's, that's getting circulated around, which is this, where, as you can see, Enzo Maresca is looking back to the crowd and saying, what was going on? The crowd was booing. The crowd was being jittery. This was uh, this was taking place when the when the players were trying to build up from the back and it looked a little bit slow. It was a bit of sideways movement as well, and there wasn't enough impetus to pass forward. The Stanford Bridge crowd started booing. The Stanford Bridge crowd started becoming a little bit annoyed, and Enzo Maresca didn't appreciate that. And and I fully get it. And I've said this from the get go, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry about online fans being toxic. Honestly, don't worry about that because online realm pretty much stays online. It doesn't really go out in the real world. People, when you meet them in real world, they're quite easy to talk to. But when you come to Twitter, when you go to Instagram, when you go to Facebook, it can get very toxic because that's just the way people talk in these, in these platforms. Don't worry about social media. Worry about the match-going fans because I guarantee you, the match-going fans will be the first one to be toxic at Chelsea Football Club. This is what I've been saying. The match-going fans, have they have to be the first one, the most patient. Because this is the football we're going to play. It may look at times boring. But this is what Enzo Maresca has been brought in for to build a certain philosophy, to build a foundation. And if the fans at Stamford Bridge cannot stay patient, it's only gonna get more difficult. You you think you think after watching that Manchester City game, that's it. It's it's all over now. Chelsea will now move on to the next few games that they're just gonna breeze past, you know, oppositions like it doesn't even matter. It should be a walk in the park. No. That game against Manchester City is not a one-off. This is what I've been saying. Don't look at that Manchester City game as a one-off. There's a lot of hard work that needs to happen. There's a lot of training sessions, grueling training sessions, repetitions that Chelsea need to do before we can start clicking into gears. And I hope all throughout this time we can pick up the wins because it's important or else some fans, especially the match-going fans, won't be able to 
digest what's going on. So look, match going fans, I, I urge like even Enzo Maresca to say in the press conference to, to basically plead to the match going fans that you need to keep backing us, man. You need to keep backing us because honestly speaking, guys, there's no looking back anymore. We can't be chopping and changing managers anymore. I'm sorry. This is it. We've got a manager with a philosophy and it's going to take time. It's We're going to figure out which players fit where. A lot of players need to leave. And it's a process. I'm sorry to say the P word, but it's a process. And it's going to take time. If the match-going fans are not on board, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Romelu Lukaku is very close to joining Napoli. So thank God. Goodness, this is a player that's moving on. The drama is coming to an end. I mean, this guy, <laughs> this guy, look what he did. Rio Ferdinand's post, he goes and likes it as well. He, uh, honestly, this guy has to be the worst signing of our history. Worst signing. And, and the reason why I say he's the worst signing is because of his character. He's got an absolutely ill character. He sabotaged the football club knowingly doing that interview where he just openly sprouted his love for Inter Milan and, and he, he demeaned our football club. And since then, it's not been the same. He then categorically said he doesn't want to return back. He doesn't want to return back. And he's another one on big wages we need to get rid of. And it looks, and looks like we are getting closer and closer to getting rid of him. And thank God, thank God this saga is ending. It's been an absolute nightmare and it's been a disaster, 100% disaster for me. Honestly, I don't hope this on even our rivals. This type of mess, I don't even hope this on our rivals because this was a total nightmare. I'm glad it's now going to finish. And thank you for Napoli and Antonio Conte for taking the player. Next up, PSG have decided not to pursue a deal for Victor Osiman despite Gonzalo Ramos's injury blow. This comes from Lekip, who are very big when it comes to French news. So a lot of people were worried, oh, Ramos injured, PSG are going to be after Osiman. No, Osiman is still open, up for grabs. Lukaku going to Napoli, I feel, now that Jao Felix is done. I think Chelsea are going to wrap this one up. There has to be a deal. Somehow we're going to do a deal. I don't know how. We're going to find a deal somewhere, somehow, uh, and then we're going to look through the details as to how it happened. But I think this will happen. Ossiman as a striker, we need. We saw what Nicholas Jackson did against Manchester City, and this is, once again, not a one-off thing against Manchester City. We saw Nicholas Jackson do that last season as well. So we need a proper striker. Jackson can learn of that striker. Um, and, yeah, for us to compete this season, this needs to happen. So let's see what happens with... Ossiman news in the upcoming days before the transfer window closes. I think that is the next big thing that's going to happen. Um, Jamie Vardy telling Romero, Romero to F off. Uh, that's interesting. Um, and I think that's the last bit of news. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts about everything we spoke about. Ja Felix, here we go. Raheem Sterling drama. Enzo Maresca pleading the Chelsea you know, match-going fans to stay patient, stay calm. Chelsea match going fans will be the first one to be toxic. That's my thoughts. And of course, Romelu Lukaku and Ossiman situation, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, take care. See ya.